Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, quite often done a video, so I thought I'd do this one today, especially with the fact that the Quest 3 is coming out in the next few days. So I wanted to talk about VR headsets and the advantages and disadvantages of this, the, the main ones you can get. Obviously, I haven't got a Quest 3, and I won't be getting a Quest 3, but I've got a Quest 2 here, Pico 4, and of course, a PSVR 2. Now, it's not as simple as saying one headset's better than the other because they do different things. It's all right saying the best uh, quality headset and the best visuals I'm going to get is off this, but I have to connect it up to a 500 quid PS5 and it's cabled. A lot of people don't like that. The Quest 2 has a load of different games. I mean, crazy amount of games. A lot of them are bad. I had, I'll tell you that for now, but they do a lot of different things and there's a lot of different games for it. And then the Pico 4 is what I use to sim race, and that, that's simply because of the fact that the graphics are better on this than that, and that's because of the fact that it's got better lenses. And it's, I get a better connection to my PC with this than I did with this. Um, so that's what I use them for. And then you've also got PA, PC VR, where you can buy dedicated PC VR headsets. Uh, Vive, uh, HP Reverb 2, which is what I had prior, um, which was a great headset, but connectivity was absolutely garbage it works some days it wouldn't others i'd get another headset to do exactly the same thing and i had a similar experience with the vive and that's because maybe i could have run an amd graphics card people say that's that's the issue but with them you do get the graphics are going to be infinitely better because they're connecting up straight to the graphics card into a display port so you're going to get the better the best graphics you can out of one of those or so you'd think uh, i'm not necessarily in agreement with that because some of the stuff on this is as good as, if not better, in my opinion, obviously in my opinion. So let's talk about them quickly. We're going to talk about the Quest 2. The Quest, and the reason I want to talk about the Quest 2 is because I'm going to price drop this thing again, I'd imagine, as they did with the um, Quest 1 when the Quest 2 came out. So the Quest 2 is basically, doesn't come like this, obviously. It comes with a different head, a different head strap, which is absolute garbage. Everybody will tell you the same thing. The headset that comes with its stock is horrible. And uh, this thing has an extended battery. So get better battery life out of it. So this is actually my son's. He uses this. Not, it was mine originally. He uses this all the time. Uh, he really likes it. Mainly because of the fact that you can get so many games for it. Now, this has got Fresnel lenses. You've all probably seen one of these. I'm talking to the converter here. So it's got Fresnel lenses, and they're not the best in the world, but the graphics are more than adequate for what you need it for. And for the price point, um, at the minute, it's not bad. It went up 100 quid, I remember, a while ago, for some strange reason. This has also got an anti-fog thing on it. You don't need one. It's a complete waste of money, really. But, um, but the head strap is essential. There's a couple of different ones. I can't remember, I think this is the Bobo one. So there's a couple of different ones you can get. And they vary. But try and just watch some reviews on head straps. Because you can get, if you go on Amazon to look, they've got about 50. And 48 of them will be garbage, I can guarantee it. So that's what you need to do with that. The Pico 4. So the Pico 4 has is very similar. It's standalone. We'll talk about standalone ability of these two in a minute. So it's standalone. You don't have any wires going to it, and even on my PC, I use it wirelessly. Um, this does not have Fresnel lenses. This has pancake lenses, so they're completely flat. And with that, makes it the sweet spot. In other words, the, the point of you, where your eye is getting the best possible picture, that's called your sweet spot, is much bigger on this than it is on this. And that's not necessarily saying it's going to be bad on that. You're very, it's very something you get used to very, very quickly when you're on VR. What you have to think with VR, if you've never experienced it before, you're not going to get the graphics you can see on your screen. When you watch a video playback of someone playing VR, it doesn't look like that. It's a totally different kind of image you get. So that's something you've got to be aware of, but something you get very used to very, very quickly. It's not all about the graphics on VR. It's the playability and the immersiveness you get out of it. I do sim racing, so... I get the immersiveness about it makes me feel more like I'm in a car. But this works exactly the same way as the Quest does. The, the tracking is done by cameras in the top and bottom. And you have controllers and it just picks up the cameras from the controllers. Works exactly the same way. Now both of these two are standalone. Now what I mean by standalone is you don't need a PC to power them or a PlayStation or anything. They're just play and go. 
So they, these both have these are both 128 gig storage in them, and they both run off something akin to a smartphone. Now because of that, you're always going to have a limitation of what the power can be because it's not a PC running it and it's not a PlayStation 5 running it. Um, and like, this video isn't to knock any of these at all because they're all they're different. But what you do get is an immense playability. Now this one does not have anywhere near as many games as this does. And if it did, they'd have a bit of competition, but they haven't. It hasn't taken off anywhere near as well as that has. For me, it doesn't matter because I only use Steam VR. So for me, it makes absolutely no difference at all. And then we have the PSVR 2. So I had the PSVR 1 a long time ago now for my PlayStation 4. Absolutely horrible thing. It had a stupid box that you had to connect up through HDMI's and then you plugged the hit then you had a power supply for that it then plugged into the back of your USBs you had to plug an HDMI cable directly from that into there and you couldn't run a 4k path through it was horrible um, but this is a new version and thankfully on the new version it just has one cable USB-C plugs in the front that's it that's all you've got but you have got a cable the benefits of having the cable are obviously that you've got no processing power at all in here, which makes the price of these things ludicrous because it's 500 and odd quid and not all that you've got in there really is your processor for the lenses and, and a, shoot, a board and that's it. And your lenses obviously, which is where the money is and your screens. Um, but the biggest that difference is of course that the PS5 is power in this. And there is a difference. Uh, and it's huge, the difference. There was problems with this when it first came out. I, was, I didn't buy it when it first came out. I've not had it that long. Uh, I wait till the teasing problems have been sorted out. And I don't experience anything. I don't expect experience blurriness in it or anything. It looks sharp as a sharp, as very sharp to me. And if I play um, Gran Turismo 7 on it, it looks truly amazing. The details when you're in the car are second to none. They're certainly better than anything I've experienced here. And there's certainly anything I experienced with any of the VR headsets for the PC. I think that, in my mind, it's just a different class. You can get quite a few games for this, but of course, this again has Fresnels, but it's the different. The lenses on this are different than they are on the Quest, but you've still got a very similar, a similar kind of thing. Pass through on all of these has pass through on. So in other words, when you've got the headset on, you can see through by the press of a button, um, which is important. Some are colour, some black and white, but it's important that you can see where you're going. Obviously, the great thing uh, about this one compared to this one, you have to set up your room, and, to set, and I knew that I know the new Quest doesn't uh, works a similar way to this. So on these two, you have to with your controller mark out your floor and Get, a, get your area to play in so you can't hit things and bump into things and it'll make you do that before you play on this and I believe on the Quest 3 it doesn't do that you just point your controller all around your room the camera the cameras on the controller pick up your room and it gives you your play area much much easier to use much better and I believe the Quest 3 has that um, the reason I wanted to do the video is because I don't know how good the Quest 3 is going to be, but certainly for the money that I think this will... I think if this is knocked down, if you can start picking this up for 300 or 250 which is what I think will happen. If you could pick up one of these for 250 I think it's a no-brainer. Because uh, there's a vast amount of games it's got. And how many games are coming out that are going to be Quest 3? Just straight Quest 3 games out of the box, or Quest 2 games that are enhanced. Because they are going to be enhanced, the graphics are going to look better on them. But, we don't know. Um so it's one of them I think for the money you can't really go wrong with anything on this table but it depends on your needs if you own a PlayStation 5 I would recommend buying one of these if you don't then it's one of these two or the new Quest 3 the new Quest 3 certainly um, when it's set, when things settle down and you know how good it is and the bugs are ironed out because I, I wouldn't recommend buying any product brand new straight out of the box when it's just come out because you're going to get bugs Wait for them bugs to be ironed out, wait for the firmware to be reset and everybody's happy with everything and you'll get a great product, I'm sure you will. So, 
Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope it's helped anybody that's probably on the fence about buying one of these or if it hasn't, I've just waffled on for 10 minutes. But anyway, good to be back. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.